Hey everyone, today we're looking at... Hey, uh, this is Logic from like two weeks after recording the rest of this. I don't know if I'm going to be making another response to Claudia Albers anytime soon, but these recent videos that I found have topics so outlandish that I wanted to at least include them in a video for posterity, so I'm going to mention them here. The first one is Claudia has this video telling people not to practice social distancing and to go assemble in church instead because COVID-19 is the image of Satan, and so if you're not some asshat helping to spread disease around society, you're falling away away from God. It's very tempting to dedicate a video to, but honestly, it's mostly just a frothing religious rant, so there's not much there in the way of arguments, just tons of Bible quotes. And I don't really want to make videos about coronavirus, to be honest. I feel like there are plenty out there. But here's a little bit from Claudia to get the flavor, though. Do not try to preserve your life. It is of no value in this situation. You are being tried. You are supposed to disobey these orders. If you have been told to practice social distancing, disobey. If you have been told to stay off the streets, disobey. If you have been told to close your business, disobey. If they close it, go back the next day and open it. If you have been told or even been asked nicely by the president to close your church, to have your services live streamed instead, disobey. If you have already obeyed these, repent. Have a service at your church now. Open your church, phone your members, and have a service now. Time is short. The rapture is about to happen. Ah, that beautiful Christian message. Fuck your life. It makes me feel so warm and fuzzy inside. This is an ideology I want to gravitate towards for personal fulfillment. 149 thumbs up, 45 down, and probably some of those 45 are from when I linked this in my Discord. Frankly, Claudia, and anyone who agrees with Claudia, normally I wouldn't say something like this. It's a little mean, but in this case it affects a lot more people than just you. I really don't care if you don't value your life. There are more important things for us to worry about right now than how bad your shitty anti-human religion makes you feel feel about yourself. So if you don't care if you live, go take a fucking swan dive off a cliff. But leave other people's lives intact, you human sharts. The other thing is, on March 24th, Claudia predicted the rapture would happen on March 25th or 26th. And the current date is, well, March 25th as of recording this. But I'm pretty confident that on the day to actually publish this, which will be way later than that, the rapture still won't have happened. I'm willing to take the chance of being proven wrong on that. So hey Claudia, here's a tip that you should have probably learned from the hundreds of other failed rapture predictions. If you're gonna make up a rapture date, make sure it's way out there, like sometime after you're pretty sure you'll be dead of old age. Cause that way, sure, you'll still be proven an absolute moron at some point, but at least you're not going to be around for it. And predicting it one day out? How dumb are you? So that's all I wanted to add. Sorry for bringing down the mood here right at the start. I now return you to your regularly scheduled nonsense. More jet fuel hoax. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X research and professional physicist. I'm running out of ways to make fun of that intro. And today I'd like to bring to you another one of my articles. This one's entitled The Jet Fuel Scam and the Geoengineering Deception to Cover Up Planet X. Now, figure one below shows a plane which apparently dumped fuel on a group of children as it approached Los Angeles. So in case anyone's unaware, sometimes for emergency landings, planes have to drop weight by dumping fuel. And they're supposed to do this at decently high altitude over unpopulated areas so that the fuel disperses by the time it reaches the ground. And even if it does reach the ground, there's not many people or nobody to be affected by it. In this case, though, neither of those things happened. It was too low altitude and it was over a populated area. So some people, kids and adults, got skin irritation, breathing problems, minor stuff. Nobody hospitalized. Everything was okay. But it was basically a screw up on the part of the airline or the tower or who knows. Anyone who wants to find that can find that. I'm sure that was all over the news. And I'll skip Claudia's summary of it. One of the first things I noticed about the picture is that there are patches in the sky that do not look as dark blue as others they look like paler blue which suggests that what we're looking at is actually clouds blue clouds in the sky sometimes the sky has clouds in it but that's probably not clouds i mean have you ever actually looked at the sky claudia have you ever gone outside and looked up well, I've responded to several of your videos now, and honestly, I get the impression that you probably haven't. You really seem like someone who's never actually seen the outdoors. A cloudless sky is not the same color blue everywhere. The sky right above your head is darker blue than the sky towards the horizon. This is to be expected. This doesn't mean there are clouds, it means the sky looks like the sky. To be honest, as someone who has gone outside, I would be very curious if it was a totally flat 
blue all the way across, that'd be weird. And of course all that's without even mentioning that the light side of the video is where the sun is. Here it is in motion, keep an eye on which side of the plane is in shadow. And I've written an article showing that that means that it's actually a Planet X cool system in the sky, and these clouds are coming from it. I know you have, Claudia. That's just one of many reasons why I have a lot of difficulty taking you seriously as a scientist. And as you can see, the fuel looks like chemtrails, except that here they are at a much lower altitude than usual. By chemtrails, she means contrails, and I know that this actually does not look like contrails in anything but the most superficial sense, which won't hold up to a minute of scrutiny, because back when I did some other video about this, the conspiracy theorist was showing a fuel dump and saying that it was chemtrailing, and my first instinct was that it was a contrail, and I didn't know at the time about fuel dumps. That's right, I was ignorant on a subject, maybe it's a really obvious subject, I don't know. Either way, I learned about it in prep for the video, and now I know. Problem fixed. Anyway, I had an issue at the time because I was looking around at different videos of contrails and wingtip vortices, and I knew what kind of plane I was looking at. I knew where its engines were on its wings, I knew what its wings looked like, I knew where the flaps were, and nothing was adding up because the phenomenon in the video didn't look anything like contrails coming out of the engines, wingtip vortices coming off of the actual wingtips or the flaps. The location wasn't right, and the trails just looked way too beefy, I guess I would say. And of course, I eventually did figure out that the reason the appearance was was wrong and the location was wrong was it wasn't a contrail, it wasn't a vortex, it was a very large quantity of fuel coming out of dump nozzles. Now I'm not saying all this to try to get Claudia for saying it looks like a contrail, because it does, at a very, very superficial level. So it's not an inaccurate statement. But I'm saying it so that any viewers of Claudia, who I'm sure are not watching this, can understand that there is a visual distinction, they don't look exactly the same, you can tell the difference from the ground. And whether it comes up in the video or not, I think it's important because these type of conspiracy theorists have a really bad habit of mixing up things that are not actually the same thing. The fact that the liquid fuel uh, being, released, being released looks like chemtrails suggests that this is what chemtrails, those that are not actually a product of the sky projection system, are. Ah, well, there you go. So if one kind of white lines coming out from behind a plane is actually fuel coming out, then all types of lines coming out from behind a plane are probably also fuel coming out. If some, then all. That's a fascinating argument. Let's apply that somewhere else. So if some stuff billowing out from behind a truck is dust kicked up by the tires, then all stuff billowing out from behind a truck is dust kicked up by the tires. Even if it looks different and it's coming from a different location. That is some good ass science there, Claudia. I'm gonna have to keep that in mind. It'll make reasoning so much easier if I don't have to worry about stupid things like distinguishing between distinct things. I can't believe how much time I've wasted doing that. As I have shown in previous articles, if airplanes carry any fuel at all, it is to promote the false narrative that jet engines need fuel, when that is simply not true, as they use the anti-gravity technology developed by Victor Schauberger. Which you may recall is a reference to Schauberger's impeller engine, or as it's also known, the Forel Nazi biosubmarine, with ample room for passengers and water intake, as they're attached to the wing of an airplane. Around the time of the Second World War. Yeah, hence the SS submarine part. Not that that's really relevant, it'd be just as funny if it wasn't a Nazi sub. Okay, maybe a little less funny. And whereas the specifications on airplanes show that they are fuel tanks within the wings, there is nothing but hydraulic equipment. You sure? Because in the last video about this you showed us this picture, which apparently you think is real, where you can clearly see the wing box and the wing ribs, that's not just hydraulic equipment. So if this picture is real according to you, you're kind of arguing against yourself here. I mean sure, you look at this picture and you say, huh, there's nothing there, there's no fuel tank, but the picture's the picture. Doesn't really matter if you don't know what it's a picture of, you're still showing it to us and saying it's real. Why would they lie about there being a jet, being jet fuel tanks in the wings if there was not a huge cover up around this topic? Didn't you kind of just repeat yourself? Why would they lie about it if there wasn't a huge cover up? Why would they cover it up if they weren't covering it up? What? There may be a hose and nozzle all the way to the wing tips in order to create a nice chemtrail display as this one over Los Angeles when needed. And here you can see these diagrams which show that they are supposed to be fuel tanks. Um, inside the body of the airplane there's one and then they are supposed to be tanks all the way along the wings. This is the Boeing 747-400 so that would go for all Boeings. And this is the Airbus 330. So you can see they're supposed to be fuel tanks all along the front edge of the wing, 
almost all the way to the back where there are the, the flaps. But as we can see from this photograph and this panel broke off during flight, there was no fuel tank there whatsoever. This is just to do with the hydraulics, with the moving of parts in the wing. Specifically the movement of the flaps. Now I know I covered this in the last Albers jet fuel video, so I'll be quick about it. I just want to touch on it once more because I find this so absolutely ridiculous. Here's the full picture and here's Claudia's chosen schematic of a plane. Slightly different plane, same general idea. So the outer panel comes off the wing in this area where the wing box isn't. And therefore that means there is no wing box. Despite the fact that we can see the wing box inside the wing despite Claudia telling us it doesn't exist. I don't know how she can make the same mistake twice in a row like that. I mean, this mistake was in the same video as the one with the green wing box in the broken wing that you saw sitting on the ground. And it's the exact same mistake, saying something doesn't exist that you can see right there in the picture. You just need the tiniest bit of understanding of the design of the object you're looking at. But now she's even telling us, hey, this is how the plane is supposed to look. And she shows us the drawing with the wing box inside the wing and everything. And the layout of the wing on the physical plane looks exactly like you would expect from that drawing. And yet she says, ha ha, this shows that they're lying about about it. I mean, Claudia, do you ever think about a single word that comes out of your mouth? Do you ever stop and just ask yourself if you've got it right before you publish? I mean, I know that you're never going to question the whole Jesus, God, end times Bible thing, but how about the location of panels on airplane wings? I know you've tied it to your religion, but really it's not that tied to your religion. You could separate this and question it. You wouldn't be committing some sort of heresy. And this is actually the Schauberger anti-gravity engine. Another thing you probably should have asked yourself if you were right about, I don't know where you got this idea. I gotta be honest, it almost seems like something that some troll fake conspiracy theory channel would come up with, just to make people like you say really, really stupid and funny things. But I guess who knows, I'm sure not gonna try and figure out where it comes from. That'd be a waste of time, and for all I know, maybe you came up with it all by yourself. In which case, you're not stupid, you're just dishonest. Okay, maybe both. And speaking of wasting time, letting you go through your nonsense calling this submarine an anti-gravity engine again is a waste of my time. Not gonna do that. Moving on. You can see here again. Oh, she has this one in this video too. Well, I already covered it a second time. I don't know why I'm letting her make me repeat myself. Let's move on to something new, huh? And, um, and these flaps, which seem to open as the engine lands, seems to actually stop the vortex effect because the vortex is supposed to converge towards the end. Of course, you open flaps, that stops it. And that's most likely why they open these flaps when they land. Right, so the part I cut out was her description of the Schauberger anti-gravity engine. And basically what she said was that the vortex around the engine somehow generates anti-gravity at the tip, the back tip. Don't ask me how it works, ask a physicist. And if they're not Claudia Albers, they'll laugh at you. But also the vortex drags the engine forward, it generates the thrust. So this vortex that's being generated by this engine is generating the lift and the thrust without fuel. As she says, the engine can also be used to generate electricity so there's no need for any fuel. Apparently, despite having absolutely no energy source, this engine is capable of generating the vortex that generates lift and thrust, or negates gravity and generates thrust, and of having so much energy left over it can generate electricity too. Okay, fine. And so she thinks, wow, these things that I see sticking out on the side of the engine here must be to stop that effect, because, you know, think about it. If you've got this thing that's constantly generating lift and thrust and powering itself to produce more in an endless cycle, totally unmoderated by anything like fuel burn, say, you have no way to turn off that process. You're not slowing that thing down, you're screwed. So she thinks you have to stop the vortex somehow. And so therefore, after the plane lands, it puts out these flaps, is I think how she referred to them, and that interrupts the vortex effect and slows the plane down. Well, okay, Claudia, if the vortex effect is generating anti-gravity and lifting the plane off the ground, how did it not just anti-gravity itself to the moon? And if it's generating thrust, how did the plane get low enough in speed that it could even land in the first place without catastrophic failure? You're only opening them on the runway. You say you're a physicist, but apparently these things don't cross your mind. Anyway, I'm not even gonna bother talking about what they actually are. They're called thrust reversers. Their purpose is in no way to stop the vortex flowing around the Nazi submarine attached to the airplane wings, obviously. 
And that's all that needs to be said about them. Now, this means that airplanes probably have a small fuel tank inside the body of the plane where its center of gravity would not be affected by fuel sloshing around inside it. Oh, you know what? That makes me think we missed a part. I don't know if that was my bad, if I cut it out by accident, or if you just didn't read it. I am inclined to think the latter. But it's important. Let's go back and read this. The wings of airplanes are supposed to be filled with fuel tanks. However, the system makes little sense, as the fuel distribution would change as the fuel is used causing it to slosh around from one side to the other, and thus make the airplane impossible to fly. This by itself shows that there cannot be fuel tanks in the wings. Now, let me ask you a question. If you presented an aerospace engineer with a problem like, hey, listen, we think these wings would be a really good place to store fuel. You know, it's a place that we don't use to store anything else. The weight, if it was evenly distributed, would probably help with balance. But we kind of think that, you know, when the plane banks, it'll probably slosh around. Maybe it'll all go into one wing and the plane will just spin out of control. It'll be a disaster. How can we fix this? Do you think the engineer is going to go, you don't fix it, you idiot. By itself, that shows there cannot be fuel tanks in the wings. Go home. No, they say, okay, what's the problem? Sloshing fuel, fuel moving around too much, and it causes an imbalance. How do we fix that? Well, hey, I got a great idea. I mean, we already have this wing box. It's structural. It needs all these ribs to maintain the strength of the structure. But if we put fuel in there, those ribs can also act as baffles to keep the fuel from moving around too quickly. In fact, if we wanted to, we could even separate off sections completely, create hard divisions, totally separate tanks, and then we could use, say, I don't know, like a, a system of pumps and things to move the fuel around wherever we need it. And then they build it, Claudia. Just because there's an engineering problem that you can't solve doesn't mean it's impossible. I'm sure there's plenty of problems you're not capable of solving. If that was the level every human operated at, we wouldn't even have invented the wheel yet with nozzles connecting the tank to the wing so that it can then be used for dumping just in case too many people start questioning the deception about airlines and private citizens having to pay to fill their jets with fuel when it is unnecessary or in order to promote the geoengineering deception. The engines seem to be designed to use a little fuel just to pretend that jet engines are internal combustion engines but even then, it must be a very small amount in comparison to what people are being charged for, as there are no fuel tanks in the wings. Isn't it funny how based on one little mistake or one little false premise, like not understanding that the wing box is the fuel tank, not understanding that the ribs act as baffles, you can develop this entire bizarre conspiracy theory about how everyone in the world is lying to you about a piece of technology for seriously as boring of a reason as they want to charge you more for plane tickets. I don't know, I just find it amusing how you can start with such a small misunderstanding understanding and build something so huge on top of it and have that lead you to something so monumentally idiotic. And this is white cam trail tracks being sprayed on top of dark blue ones. Mm. But the blue ones move with respect to the white ones. Yeah, I bet they do, Claudia. Now, I know that little icon down in the bottom right corner. Mr. MBB333, one of Claudia's favorite sources, even though she very, very rarely ever cites where these images come from. So I found the video this is from. First, let's take a look at it without any commentary. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on just by looking at it. Okay, there it was. And now let's let Mr. MBB333, a fellow conspiracy theorist, I might add, and one that Claudia seems to really, really like, explain it to us. This was sent in by Jody, Colorado Skywatcher, and you can see this plane is casting a shadow on the clouds above it. The clouds are acting like a, a ceiling, and the plane is casting a shadow on the ceiling above it. Great observation by Jody from Colorado. I think you might just be right there, pal. I'm guessing you heard him say that, Claudia, when you were watching that video. Did you think he was wrong about that, or did you just not pay attention? There's no airplane either, so these are fake chemtrails. Is that so? Well, I'll agree that it's hard to make out. In fact, at most points, it's borderline impossible due to the technical flaws in the video. Oftentimes, flaws in the videos I look at are clearly the fault of the person who's making them. But in this case, no, I think Jody did just fine with the tools she had available. But that doesn't mean the video is perfect. In fact, it doesn't even mean it's really good, depending on the goal. If the goal is just to say, hey, look, that's neat. There's a shadow of a contrail on the bottom of a cloud. Then great, perfect, mission accomplished. On the other hand, if the goal is to clearly see the plane that's making the contrail, not so much. 
footage. There's a whole bunch of problems stacked on top of each other here. The video zoomed way in, probably close to as far as the camera's capable of, and I'm sure that includes some digital zoom on top, which degrades the image. Then it's been compressed by the camera, then by Mr. MBB's screen recorder, then by YouTube, and maybe by something you did too. I would say Jody's doing a pretty good job of keeping the plane in the frame, probably a lot better than I'd do, but even so she's filming this by hand and she's trying to keep the camera still but it's shaking around really fast. And that's bad news for cameras, that means the whole scene's going to be changing rapidly which creates even more compression issues, not to mention motion blur. It's hard to tell for sure but I think the exposure and the focus might be shifting slightly over time, indicating possible autofocus, and focus in particular when it changes will create problems seeing really small objects, and from this perspective the plane is a tiny object. Even with all that zoom applied, it's minuscule. Most importantly, when you compare it against the size of the artifacts from the zoom and the compression. Those are creating flat colored blocks that are wider than the plane itself. There's no way you're going to see the plane properly with that amount of blockiness, let alone any detail. It's just going to get swallowed up by the background. But even so, at a few moments, there are hints of the plane, when the conditions randomly become just right to see them. Now I know none of that is going to be very satisfying to the cult of camera incompetence, but it is what it is. Occam's razor is just going to have to fill the rest in for you. And so the product of the sky projection system. So except for right at the top as well, the dark blue tracks, this seems to be only one track here, there are two, there's a small gap between them, uh, but the gap here in the white ones is even smaller. So these are definitely not uh, the same as those, they, they're not even reflections or a shadow. Claudia, that's water vapor. Towards the edge of it where it's a little less thick, it's hardly going to cast any shadow. But much more importantly, it's a shadow. Shadows don't have to have the exact same proportions as the original object, they can be stretched. Which in this case is clearly happening, it's the same thing as when you go outside when the sun is low and your shadow is really long. And just saying that, I feel like I've insulted everyone listening to this. This is some baby shit. That would be impossible. See, this is what I mean, how you seem like a person who's never actually gone outside. How can you be an ex-physicist and have done so little basic observation of the world around you? You seem to have no curiosity, no interest in how things work. These are the things I associate with scientists, and yet you seem to lack all of it. These are both being projected in the sky by the holographic projection system. And again, that same thing I was talking about, where one small misconception leads you to build this entire crazy thing on top of it. You start off just not understanding how shadows work, and from there somehow you work your way up to holographic projection system in the sky! Ugh. I honestly don't know how you people do it. Like I honestly don't understand how you go more than about five minutes without realizing oh my god my basic premise is totally flawed and incredibly stupid. This makes me look like a complete idiot. I should take out my hard drive and burn it with thermite so nobody ever sees this. So uh, it shows that these are simulations and the dark projection seems to be moving at constant speed suggesting that this is the background projection on which stars are projected at night. I'm not sure I'm following your logic here. So if the shadow moves at a constant speed, therefore this is the background projection on which stars are projected. How does the thing having a constant speed lead to, therefore, this is where stars are projected on? That seems like a wild leap. It seems like you chopped two totally unrelated sentences in half and stuck the front of one on the back of the other. Speaking of chopping things in half, come back for part two in a week. But um, no, really though, if you like the video, best thing you can do if you want to catch part two is subscribe. Actually, that's not quite true. The best thing you could do is sign up to my email list at list.logic.com. Plus, there's early access that way. But subscribing makes my number look bigger, and I like big numbers. Liking the video does that too. Please give me big numbers. I want my big numbers. <laughs> that's stupid. Anyway, thanks for sticking around. Hope everything is okay with you. If you want, join my Discord. Sometimes I'm in there chatting. I'm trying to use that a bit more to get video suggestions and things like that. So, that's it. Goodbye. No, I don't want to listen. I will disobey. No, 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 I'm not doing it. Disobey. Okay, loosey-goosey. 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 Gotta be loose. Gotta be loose. Yeah. Ready, right. steady?